fired, shots fired. First, a police shooting, now a crime alert. They were patrolling in this area due to the high crime and narcotics activity that's been reported. Tonight, neighbors are worried, many too scared to talk on camera. The one October shooting claims another life. She was always smiley and happy and was just, she was so outgoing. Tonight, News 3 talks to her family about the physical and emotional battle she faced after being shot and paralyzed. Jeffrey Epstein bombshell. Tonight, a new accuser. What we're learning about the woman known as Jane Doe 15. New clues about the mysterious woman on Sunrise Mountain five decades ago. The Cave Lady's Quest. This is News 3, live at 11. Three starts right now. People in the neighborhood where police opened fire on a suspected drug dealer Friday night tell us the neighborhood's changed. Now they live in constant fear. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Snyder. And I'm Marie Mortera. In fact, police were conducting patrols in that area of Desert Inn and Maryland Parkway when the shooting happened. Our Max Darrow joins us live near the scene. And you learned, Max, why there was a need for extra patrols there. Police say there's been an uptick in crimes in this neighborhood back here, a lot of it being drug related. Many of the folks here say they've noticed the extra patrols. Things were calm on El Cajon Street this afternoon, much different than the scene Friday night. Don't. When a police shooting unfolded. Shots fired, shots fired. Metro police say a team was on an extra patrol in the neighborhood near Vegas Valley and Maryland Parkway when the officers believed they witnessed a drug deal. When they tried to arrest the man, police say he accelerated at an officer. They were patrolling in this area due to the high crime and narcotics activity that's been reported. This part of the valley has had an increase in illegal shootings and narcotics related calls. Mario is one of the many folks who calls this neighborhood where the shooting happened home. Lately, he says he's noticed a change in the neighborhood. Just uh, police and a lot of people that don't normally see around here is every night. It's always like that here. He's not the only one. We talked to several people who were too nervous to go on camera who say they've noticed this too. In the five days leading up to the shooting and on the day of, Metro Police's daily incident information logs show more than 20 various incidents in the area between Desert Inn, Maryland Parkway, Karen, and Eastern, the police shooting near the middle of that area. Mario says he's pleased to see the extra patrols. Well, they got to take care. That's what they're here for, to serve and to protect. And is hopeful they're good for his neighborhood. Well, I just hope it improves. Max Darrow, News 3. A California woman shot and paralyzed in the one October mass shooting has died. That makes 59 people killed by the gunman's bullets. Her family says her body just couldn't handle all the stress from the injuries she suffered that night. News 3's Gabby Hart has been talking with them. She joins us live from the Healing Garden to tell us more about her. Yeah, well, here at the Healing Garden, there's more than, or at least, uh, there's exactly 58 trees planted here in honor of each victim who lost their life the night of 1 October. But what about the more than 400 others who were forced to live with severe injuries that they suffered? Kim Gervais was one of them, and her family says for the past two years, her life was filled with pain and grief. She was always smiley and happy and was just, she was so outgoing. Always smiling, always traveling and a zest for life. That's how Kim Gervais' nephew, Stefan Rudolph, says he'll remember his aunt. And he still finds it hard to believe that she was the victim of a mass shooting. Wow, my aunt actually was just in the, the, one of the largest mass shootings in, in, in the United States that I've ever heard of. The night of 1 October, as bullets poured into a crowd of more than 20,000 people at the Route 91 Country Music Festival, one of those bullets hit Gervais in the upper spine paralyzing her from the neck down. She had to grasp the fact that she no longer could work. She had to grasp the fact that she had to rely on other people to take care of her. She spent at least one year at a Las Vegas hospital before going home to California. But despite being paralyzed, she still dealt with agonizing pain, both physically and emotionally. Her best friend who went to the concert with her was also hit by gunfire. She didn't survive. She watched her best friend die right in front of her. The recovery from that is, was probably just as hard as her actual physical recovery. Her nephew says a few months ago, his aunt ended up back in the hospital dealing with complications from her injuries. She actually ended up having some heart problems there towards the end. The stress of her injuries, I believe, were putting just a lot of stress on her heart. Her family says the stress on her body was just too much. 
And tonight they're finding comfort in knowing that she's finally at peace. And I spoke with the landscaper who created or helped to create this healing garden. He says he plans to get with the city soon to discuss adding a 59th tree to this garden in her honor. I'm reporting live. Gabby Hart, News 3. All right. Thanks for letting us know uh, a little bit about her life. And it was interesting to hear from her loved ones as well. Gabby, thank you. And as we're reminded of the enduring pain from that night, the only person ever charged in the 1 October case is set to appear in federal court here in Nevada tomorrow. We know Douglas Haig is ready to take a plea deal. He's accused of illegally manufacturing ammunition, then sold to the 1 October shooter. Detectives found Haig's fingerprints on unfired bullets in that high-rise hotel suite where the gunman fired on the crowd below. We will let you know what he pleads guilty to and the sentence he faces. An intense scene earlier this evening as police responded to a report of a woman waving around a large knife. Officers called to the scene near Paradise and Twain, just blocks from the strip around 6.30. Neighbors reported the woman acting erratic, waving the knife around. Nearby apartments even evacuated. Police cleared the scene shortly after 9, telling News 3 that no crime was committed by the woman since she was in her own apartment. New at 11, a fresh bombshell in the Jeffrey Epstein case. A new accuser revealed today, our Sinclair sister station in West Palm Beach, Breaking the new development tonight, the woman with her attorney Gloria Allred by her side says she was first assaulted by a woman who worked with Jeffrey Epstein, then raped by Epstein himself when she was just 15 years old. She's known in court as Jane Doe 15, and she's suing his estate, recounting alleged prolonged abuse at Epstein's ranch in New Mexico. Epstein took my sexual innocence in front of a wall of, famed of framed photographs of him shaking hands and smiling with celebrities and political leaders. I was only 15 years old. I was contacted by one of Jeffrey Epstein's assistants and invited to Epstein's island, where I was told Prince Andrew, among others, would be a guest. That's another big development in this case tonight. In a rare interview, Britain's Prince Andrew denies having sex with a teenage girl he met through Epstein. He claims it couldn't have happened because he took his children to a pizza restaurant that day. Today, a key voting block in Southern Nevada got the attention of some of the top Democrats who want to be president. Candidates spoke at the Black Community Summit, focused on helping the historic African-American community of Las Vegas. Senator Kamala Harris wants to make housing cheaper. Congressman Stephen Horsford, who represents this part of our valley, says his constituents, constituents want action. What are they telling you? Well, what they're saying is they want the same opportunity as anyone else. In this community. Now, Horsford hasn't endorsed the Democrat for president yet, but plans to pick one before the Democratic caucus here in February. A packed week ahead in the House impeachment inquiry. Eight current and former officials from the Trump administration will testify publicly. Senior aide in the vice president's office, Jennifer Williams, set to take the stand first up tomorrow. She was on that July 25th call when President Trump asked Ukraine's president to launch investigations into the Bidens and the 2016 election in exchange for a White House meeting and the release of promised military aid from the U.S. Kurt Volker, the former U.S. Special Envoy for Ukraine, will also testify. Tomorrow's impeachment inquiry hearing set to begin at 6 in the morning our time. News 3 will have continuing coverage all day. We'll stream the hearing on News3LV.com on your computer and also our News 3 app on your mobile devices. And we'll bring you special reports on the big moments throughout the day. Tonight, state regulators warning that some marijuana products sold legally in Nevada had inaccurate THC levels on the label. An investigative team with the State Department of Taxation found misleading potency results on marijuana tested at certified AG labs up in Sparks. People with concerns about the testing of their cannabis products should contact the dispensary where they bought it. The iconic Hard Rock Cafe off Paradise set to become a memory. Construction crews began demolition today. It's part of a new renovation effort for the entire property. The new resort, Virgin Hotels Las Vegas, expected to open in the fall of 2020. The Hard Rock Cafe opened its doors in 1990 and closed on New Year's Eve of 2016. It was earlier this year when the famous guitar outside the cafe was broken down and moved to the Neon Museum. Coming up here tonight, new information in a 50-year-old local mystery. Whatever happened to the cave lady of Sunrise Mountain? Plus, run into victory. The UNLV men's basketball team ends its three-game losing streak. Our News 3's Jesse Merrick will have a live report from the Thompson Mac.
It is set to get active. Clouds coming down from the north. They're coming up from the south. They're going to converge in southern Nevada. Rain is in the forecast, and coyotes on the prowl. Your weather cast when we come back. The Richard Harris Law Firm, just in case. Watch Hit of the Night, only on News 3. Sponsored by Innovative Pain Care Center. Closed captioning in Spanish, sponsored by attorney Adam Kuttner. Injured? Call the law offices of Adam S. Kuttner for a free consultation. 382-0000. Special report time now. We love a good mystery around here. We have one for you going back more than five decades. Who was the cave lady of Sunrise Mountain? Why was she here? And whatever happened to her? Well, Tom Holly has been looking into this odd piece of local history for years and recently discovered some brand new information. The big breakthrough came four years ago when I received exclusive audio recordings of the woman who called herself Mrs. Morgan and lived by a cave at the base of Frenchman Mountain, which most people call Sunrise. I thought I'd finally learned everything I could, and then a few months ago I got an email out of the blue from a woman in Florida. You don't know me, but this is so much more than, you, than people in Las Vegas think it is. Carolyn Huff was born just after her father, Stanley Clark, co-founded Las Vegas Story Groups to record Mrs. Morgan. This is the second book of a three book series, the first of which cannot yet be published. I am limited at this time strictly to the story of Sunrise Mountain. After Carolyn's father passed, she found correspondence and receipts from Las Vegas motels. My parents were spending money, they were helping to fund um, like these record recordings and my dad was traveling. The 1965 copyright states that the goal was to unify religions and apply religion to everyday life, though Mrs. Morgan's words are ambiguous. A religious symbol of any sort would be inappropriate here because this property belongs to all of the people of this country. Named her Rox Morgan and Stanley Clark, as well as Frederica Lionel, the socialite wife of a Las Vegas attorney, and Faye Dinette, who would visit Mrs. Morgan's mountain cave with her husband Dan and daughter Echo, who was 12 then and is still here today. She was kind of stern, strict. Letters from Mrs. Morgan show a soft spot for Echo. Really well behaved. I was very well behaved. It was like, shh, you listen, you sit, shh, you listen. Mrs. Morgan spun tales of violent fights at the cave. Brawls. The cave lady always claimed to win. Reaching upward, I grabbed her left breast with my left hand and twisted hard, making her release my hair. Then I jumped over the campfire to where the loose dust and debris from the cave was piled. But much of the talk is just about turning this spot into a comfortable area to live and entertain guests. I have moved a quarter of a ton of earth a day, as well as approximately a thousand pounds of boulders. We first showed you the remains of the cave six years ago. Since then, the county has filled it in. But look closely and you can still find some of the walls and floors built by Mrs. Morgan and her crew to entertain dozens of guests every day. If this is getting away from it all, I'd certainly hate to be in the middle of it. Frankly, this place is like Grand Central Station. But Echo also remembers a darker mood, like when the Review Journal identified her in a picture of kids playing in a park. Mrs. Morgan and her pals were concerned. They were afraid that my picture was in the paper like somebody was going to harm me or take me or hurt them. The correspondence also reveals run-ins with Maxine Perrin, who ran a closeted gay bar, and references to Sheriff Ralph Lamb as a thief trying to jimmy the corporation. And what about this notebook containing Mrs. Morgan's name, along with Virginia Hill and Countess Dorothy Dentist DeFrasso? both mistresses of mobster Bugsy Siegel. Mrs. Morgan disappeared without a trace in late 1966. Looking back all these years later, Echo thinks powerful people in Las Vegas could have closed the cave on Mrs. Morgan. Sheriff Lamb, of course, and the mafia, and I don't know. I don't know. She was very paranoid, though. However the saga ended, it seems to have started with the best of intentions. They were all dreamers, and they wanted to unite people, and I think that's a noble thing to do. Today, I have a lot more information about Mrs. Morgan and her associates, but we still don't know what happened to her after leaving Las Vegas. Look for follow-up stories in the future as more information comes out. I'll be giving a public presentation on the subject at the Clark County Library in early January. A lot of people All fascinated right. by it, no doubt. Yeah, so more information and yet more questions. Yes, I know. It just gets weirder and weirder. Well, Kevin's talking about a mysterious thing that could be falling hmm. from the sky. We want to know what it is, right? It's been almost two months. <laughs> Actual water coming down from the clouds. Crazy. Really good chance it's going to happen to, and the potential is there for a lot of it. We'll talk about that, this, but first, 
We're about a week past the full moon. We haven't done a whole lot of howling here, but the howlers are still out there. Check out this guy in Queens Ridge. That's near Charleston and Wallapai. Looks like he's doing some grazing out there. Not sure what's falling from that tree, but some of the neighbors have been coming out for a closer look. This guy actually got spooked by humans. Nobody was hurt. We didn't get any reports of any animals hurt, but they are out there. And of course, there's that old golf course, which has been shut down in that neighborhood as well. Some pretty wild pictures, and we're seeing more and more of these too, especially in Western Valley neighborhoods. All right, let's go ahead to that big number, 78 today. We missed tying a record that's been standing since 1949 by a single degree. Saturday, we hit 79, and that was a record high for the day. So the warmth has continued. We are focused on the mountain because there is a winter storm warning in effect. The lodge and areas higher in elevation could wind up with better than one foot of snow by the time it starts tomorrow until it ends on Thursday. Bob Miller Middle School, Green Valley Parkway in Paseo Verde. They're at 60 degrees right now. We'll go from Mr. Miller's School to Mrs. Miller's School. Sandy Miller Elementary near Lake Mead and Nels. They're at 54. No wind. In fact, they haven't had any wind all day. That's going to change a little bit tomorrow. Marshall Darnell, that's up near Fort Apache and Ann Road. They're coming in right now at 59 degrees. The lake's at 60, 56 in Aliante, 57 down in Southern Highlands. But the star of the show, temperature-wise, the highs. Look at this for the 18th of November. All these neighborhoods at or above 80, including near Nellis at 82, mid to upper 70s elsewhere. Outside the valley, the mountain sitting at 60 degrees right now. It's 70 in Laughlin. Laughlin maxed out at 87. Overton also made it to the 80 plus degree club. So the high in McCarran of 78 was 13 above normal. 53 was the morning low. 15 of our first 18 November days have been above normal. High of 78. Our forecast was 77. So. That's another 100 bucks for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Southern Nevada. We are 12 for 12 in the month of November. That's $1,200 in our Monday through Friday three-degree guarantee. Feeling pretty good about tomorrow, but it does get dicey this week when you're dealing with clouds and rain on the temperatures. We should be able to power through and make a lot more money for the Boys and Girls Clubs. Moderate levels of dirt, dirt dust, crud, junk in the air. That will finally get cleaned out with the impending rain. First of all, the temperatures tomorrow, about a 54 degree start. We'll get to the mid 70s during the lunch hour, peak in the mid to upper 70s before pulling back. Little bit of a breeze for the first time in quite a while as well, but we're still talking like 10 to 15 miles per hour. So clouds coming down from the north, clouds coming up from the south. These clouds are associated with what was once Tropical Storm Raymond, so they're coming in warm. But the system from the north is coming down cold. It will eventually win out. Temperatures are going to drop, and the potential for a lot of snow as these systems converge in southern Nevada there for our spring mountains and areas east as well. In fact, let me put the timeline in motion. It looks like there's a slight chance tomorrow afternoon, but really the best chance tomorrow night through Wednesday with lingering showers into Thursday before we get a chance to towel off. Unusual because we have not seen this in a while, and the roads could get slick. Overnight tonight, the mountain's going down to 43, 53 in Boulder City. High temperatures for your Tuesday afternoon, 78 in Overton, 79 in Laughlin, uh, 75 if you're driving through Prim, 60 on the mountain. Las Vegas Valley tonight will bottom out of 53. A few clouds will arrive late. Tomorrow, the clouds will continue to increase and thicken, and so will the plot. Rain is possible in the afternoon, but again, the best chance late tomorrow night through Wednesday, some areas, especially in the foothills, could wind up with better than half an inch of free water. That is big time for the desert. And remember, we're already well above normal because of last winter. Thursday, a few more spotty showers will start to dry off Thursday afternoon. Weekend looks good, but we're not going to be setting any more record mm -hmm. highs. Not for a while. It'll start feeling like November. Wow. In November. <laughs> I think you just got elected mayor of Lee Canyon. So <laughs> oh, oh, gosh, they are going to be there. really happy about okay. that. They could, because uh, especially with the temperatures getting colder, they'll get some free snow yeah. and they'll be able yeah. to make some too. Excellent. Something to see. Yeah. All right. Good news when it comes to sports. We'll have that when we come back. If you have a cell phone, and most of us do, listen up to this one. We could save you hundreds of dollars a year. Find out how when you wake up with us, Wagners, on News Free today on a Tuesday morning. We'll see you then. It's the seventh annual night out with News Three, benefiting the Rape Crisis Center. Carl Jr. Well, if it isn't Big Carl, you fixing to sauce me up? Sick those beefy twins on this cheese hound? Scram, Big Mac! Go play with your extra toy bun. The Big Carl combo, just four ninety nine, only at Carl's Jr. Are you Black 
Friday. The gift you really want is at Nissan's Black Friday event. Save big on our tech-filled lineup. Like Rogue with available Safety Shield 360 or Altima with available intelligent all-wheel drive. Hurry in now. Save up to 3000 on the 2020 Rogue or get a low 289 per month lease on the 2019 Kicks. Have you got a clogged drain? I'm going to send a drain technician to open that drain for a flat $80. And then we're going to run a remote camera down there to see what caused the clog in the first place. Have you found a fancy toilet or faucet that you'd like to have installed? We're installing customer supplied fixtures for just $180. Provided it's a normal installation. We're celebrating Gettle's 80th birthday. High five. High five. Gettle. G-O-E. T-T-L. We get things done, but it's hard to spell. She wanted to move someplace warm. But he wanted snow for the holidays. So we built a snow globe. I'll get that later. But the one thing we could both agree on was getting Geico to help with our homeowner's insurance. What? Switching and saving was really easy. I love you! Sweetie, hands off the glass. Ugh. Call Geico and see how easy saving on homeowners and condo insurance can be. I love her. I love that one. I love it. I love it. It's easy to fall in love with a new Chevy. I love this one, too. And with great wow. deals all month long, it's the perfect wow. time to see why. I love it. That's my next truck. Head into your local Chevy dealer and discover oh the many God. reasons to fall in love with a new Chevrolet. I love it. I'm going to go buy a Chevy. <laughs> Current competitive owners can use Auto Show Cash to get $47.50 total cash allowance on most Blazer models. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. They call you really big car. Must be those triple sauce meat heaps. How about you cloak me in cheese? Break me in a three-piece patty suit like a beef tycoon. Carl's Jr., you know what you want. It's now time for the News 3 Station Casino Sports Desk. Well, hey there. We're coming to you live from the Thomas and Mac, where the UNV running Rebels entered the night riding a three-game losing streak, hoping a date with the Abilene Christian Wildcats would be just the thing to help them turn it around. And what better way to get back into the win column than with the win in the first of a four-game, eight-day homestand for the running Rebels. And this one really begins and ends with Amari Hardy. He's been the linchpin for the Rebels just this far in the season. And it was no different tonight. He started 4-4 four for four and had 11 points to help set the tone, helping the Revs take a 10-point lead into the break. However, the start of the second period wasn't so pretty. The Rebels committed four turnovers early on, went scoreless for nearly three minutes as the Wildcats mounted a comeback, nodding the game up at 50. But just like the game started, it finished. With Amari Hardy shouldering the load for this team, dropping a game-high 25 points on 9 of 10 shooting from the field. That helped propel the Rebels to the 72-58 win. One that proved just how valuable Hardy really is to this team. He's been the heart and soul of our team. I think, you know, even some of the games where he hasn't uh, had as many, you know, it's been more volume on shooting. I don't necessarily attribute that as much to him as us needing better movement on offense. We leave him hanging a lot. I think he's coming every day focused. He wants to win. Uh, I've seen him, his leadership continue to grow every day, and I think he's prepared himself for that moment. So when we needed big baskets tonight, he was able to step up and do that, and we need him to continue doing it moving forward. All right, moving forward to the slick stuff. We all saw it last night. VGK breaking the skid in style with a 6-0 win over the Calgary Flames. Flurry was unbelievable, snagging 34 saves in route to the donut. So make sure you guys go and grab them this week. Now, along with Flurry, really what a game we saw from the team as a whole. A full 60 minutes of physical hockey where everyone got in on the action. VGK's transition game was on point, and it showed in those six goals. As Glant says, a big win at a much-needed time, but it ain't getting any easier from here, so they got to keep the pedal to the metal this week. Thank God this losing streak's over because uh, we got a good team. We're playing well and uh, a lot of good things tonight, so we just got to carry it over. we got a big week coming up, Toronto, San Jose, and then Edmonton, so tonight was a good start. This is our M.O., and, and that feeling that the guys have that we have right now and had during the match, like that's something that needs to uh, be a part of our identity and, and part of our confidence and swagger because that's what, that's what makes good teams good teams. All right, sticking with the Knights, here's a look at our innovative pain care center hit of the night from last night's win. Feels like this segment was made for Revo. My guy was dropping fools like Debo out there last night. 
you got to keep your head on the swivel when he is on the ice. Guys, obviously, we'll look to see Revo do more of that tomorrow when they take on the Toronto Maple Leafs, but also for the Knights, string together two wins and get things rolling as they get ready for San Jose, who's one of the hottest teams in the NHL. We'll see how it all goes. However, that does it for now. For News 3 Sports, I'm Jesse Merrick. Stick around. We'll be right back. Here's a fun new way to win up to 10 grand instantly. The Price is Right Plinko Bonus Bucks. Win any day, any time, on any machine. Jackpots start at $5,000 and must hit by $10,000. Every time it hits, one lucky winner gets up to 10 grand cash. And everyone else gets free slot play, guaranteed. The Price is Right Plinko Bonus Bucks is hitting now at all station casinos, palms, and fiestas. The News 3 Sports Desk is sponsored by Station Casinos. STN Sports Mobile is the easy way to bet from your phone or tablet. Sign up today and earn a bonus of up to $50. News 3 and the Rape Crisis Center team up to raise funds and awareness. Join me November 21st at Town Nightclub for an evening of food, fun, and entertainment. It will kick off our season of giving. It's the seventh annual night out with News 3 benefiting the Rape Crisis Center. Drone 3, sponsored by Hanratty Injury Law. I'm Kevin Hanratty. Call me your lawyer. Call me, Las Vegas. Call me now for your personal injury representation. I did some early shopping this year. One for you, one for me. I love it. I got us a little something, too. Yeah? Yep. One for you. And one for me. I love it. Oh, actually, that was supposed to be for me. I love it. I like red. Current eligible non-GM owners switch to GMC and get 16% below MSRP on most 2019 Acadia models. That's over 8,300 on this Acadia Denali. We are professional grade. GMC. Merry Christmas, baby. Sure did dream at night. I'm attorney Paul Powell. A lot of injury lawyers promise a lot of things, but how many will promise not to take more money than you at the end of your case? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'll make the promise. Paul Powell, more lawyer, less fee. Don't get sucked into Black Friday Madness and other dealers. Prestige Chrysler Jeep Dodge will give you huge Black Friday savings all month. Even get employee pricing for everyone. Buy a new Chrysler 300 or Pacifica, just $22.9. Get the Prestige Chrysler Jeep Dodge. Finally tonight, we have to show you this magical day for a family in Illinois. This is Nash Steinman, who just turned three years old. It is a very big birthday for this little boy, considering doctors told his mom he wouldn't make it to see his second birthday. They're soaking up every second. Clearly, he proved them wrong. Hundreds of people from his community came out to celebrate with him. They threw a parade. Little Nash has a rare neuromuscular disease that causes a weakness and a sudden inability to breathe, and there is no cure. For the latest weather conditions in your neighborhood, tune in to News 3 or go to News3LV.com. The News 3 Water Smart Weather Network is brought to you by Southern Nevada Water Authority. Stay water smart. This year, Southwest.